In this video lecture, we're going to look at an overview of the reproductive system, and that is the organs that are involved. And we'll spend more time looking at homo human chromosome numbers as well as the process of cell division, which is either mitosis or meiosis. So first, in the reproductive system, the primary sex organs are the gonads. These are the organs that actually produce the gametes, the egg or sperm. So of course, for males, it's the testes. Uh, that make the sperm and for the females the ovaries that make the egg. The secondary sex organs are still essential for reproduction but they don't make the eggs and sperms. So they're not the primary sex organs. They're considered secondary sex organs. So that's going to be all the other structures associated with the reproductive system. So for males it includes a bunch of ducts, some glands, and then of course the penis for delivery of the sperm cells. For females, it's going to include the uterine tubes, the uterus to nourish and develop the fetus, and the vagina to receive the sperm. Now, secondary sex characteristics are not the same as secondary sex organs. These are secondary sex characteristics are the, are the characteristics that show up at puberty and believed to attract a mate. Um, so it's basically making the body aware or others aware that this person is now ready to actually produce offspring. So things like pubic, axillary, and facial hair in males, um, scent glands, you'll notice adolescents, you start smelling more, making more hormones, more hormones cause production, more pheromones, uh, body morphology changes for males, they get mu or muscular, for females we get bigger hips, and then low pitched voice in males as well as another secondary sex characteristic that again shows up at puberty to indicate you are now a mature adult and can reproduce. Now mitosis and meiosis are the cell processes that are used to divide cells. Mitosis basically takes and produces two genetically identical daughter cells from the original cell. We use this all the time in tissue repair and growth. And of course, we'll see a lot of mitosis going on for the embryo or fetus to grow because we have to start with that one cell zygote and end up with this millions and millions of cells uh, infant at nine months period of time. Now meiosis is only used to produce gametes. Now in males, from one original germ cell, we'll get to make four sperm. In females, you'll see where in one original germ cell, we'll only make one egg. But each of those sperm and egg have half the number of chromosomes they originally had. So for example, if humans have 46 chromosomes, that means a sperm has only 23 in it, in it, whereas the egg has only 23 chromosomes in it as well. That way when the egg and sperm get together, the 23 plus 23 will make 46. We're back to the original number. Now to do this, it takes a couple stages of, of div division. Actually, there's several, but we're not going to get into the minute details of meiosis. We're going to basically divide it in two cell divisions. That is meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 results in what are called haploid cells. These are the cells that have half the number of chromosomes. Whereas mitosis, meiosis 2 is further division that's very similar to the process of mitosis. So we don't have any of the reduction, reduction in the number of chromosomes, but we are going to divide the cells one more time. Now meiosis is only going to occur in the seminiferous tubules of the testes for the males and the follicles of the ovaries for the females. And again, the result is we're going to produce haploid cells from the original diploid germ cell. Now, exactly what those haploid and diploid terms are shown on the next slide. Here, let's imagine we pulled out of a body cell are basically these chromosomes. So in any typical body cell, you have 46 chromosomes. We can pair those chromosomes up and number them 1 through 23. So you can see the first pair, second pair, third, and so on, all the way to the 22nd pair. These guys are called autosomes because they're not dealing with the sex of the individual. The last pair, the sex chromosomes, is what determines your sex. XY, of course, for males, XX for females. 
Now from these pairs, if I could pull one of the pairs each, and let's say I pick these guys out, and I said, oh, all of these in pink here came from my mother, whereas the ones that aren't highlighted came from my father. So when the sperm of my father and the egg of my mother's got together and produced me, these are the origin of those chromosomes. The pink ones came from my mom's egg. The non-highlighted or non-pink ones came from my father's sperm. So each pair of these chromosomes are called homologous chromosomes. Homologous meaning homo means same, so these had the same kinds of characteristics on it. So let's say in chromosome number 15, let's say there's a location for a gene for eye color. Well, that same location on my father's chromosome is also going to say eye color. So both, both versions of chromosomes 15 or in the 15th pair, we see eye color. Maybe over here on the 10th one is whether you can roll your tongue or not. My mom said I could roll it. My dad's said I can't roll it. And you can keep doing that. So that basically these chromosomes have the same traits on them. That's why they're considered homologous. But again, one came from mom and one came from dad. Now, if a cell like this cell that I'm representing here has both sets of chromosomes, that is, has its one set from mom, the ones in pink, and the other set from dad, then we say that cell is diploid. Okay, And we can symbolize that as 2n, and our 2n number is 46. There's 46 chromosomes here. Haploid is when you only have one set of chromosomes. So n is, is the symbol for haploid, and so n is just 23. So the process of meiosis is going to take these homologous chromosomes and separate them so that every sex cell, either the sperm or the egg, has one out of the two homologous chromosomes. So I'll just pull one at random from one of the ones of this pair, one from this pair, one from this pair, and so forth, all the way through. And those are the ones that are going to be in one sperm or egg, and the other ones are going to be in a different sperm or egg. And that's going to be the process of meiosis. So here we can compare mitosis and meiosis. Now let's look first at mitosis. Mitosis is simply taking a cell where the DNA is duplicated. So we have one original, uh, so to speak, and one copy of the DNA. And then resulting, though, in two daughter cells when the cell divides. Um, but the daughter cells, notice, still have two chromosomes. So what if we start with, we start with two chromosomes, we end up with two chromosomes. So for us humans, if we start with 46, we stay with 46 at the end. So we start with a diploid cell, we end with a diploid cell. It doesn't change. In meiosis, however, we're going to see a reduction in the number of chromosomes. And that reduction is going to happen in the first meiotic division. What happens here is that these homologous chromosomes pair up, and instead of dividing the chromatids, as we see here, dividing these chromosomes in half, and then they each become one chromosome here, I'm going to separate these homologous chromosomes. So these guys get separated, and they end up in opposite cells. So in our first meiotic division, notice I started with two chromosomes. But after the first meiotic division, I only have one chromosome in each one of the two daughter cells. So now I've taken this diploid cell, and it's now become haploid. It's half the number. And then the second meiotic division is just continuing that process. Now we're going to separate the two, the original and the copy, so to speak, of the um, chromosome here. And so that we still only have one chromosome in each of the daughter cells, but now we end up with a total of four in this example. So again, meiosis, you reduce the number of chromosomes in half, going from diploid down here to haploid. Mitosis, start with diploid, you end up with diploid. You still have the same number of chromosomes. So that's going to end our little quick overview of mitosis and meiosis and the organs of the reproductive system. We'll move on to more detail about male anatomy and hormonal regulation.